Okay. A little light should be on again. All right. So I'm going to, I got my same gas consumption data from week two, and we're going to do an example of running a regression in Excel. So I've got all my data over here. Let me get rid of this other data that I had. I've got my, there, my gas tax, average income, paved highways, proportion of population, and the consumption of gas. So I want to use my gas consumption as my dependent variable that I'm, and I'm going to try to explain that using all these other variables that are here. So I will know that I have to run a regression. So I'm going to go to my data tab. There's other ways too that you can, um, oh, how do they do it? Equals estimate or there's different functions that you can use that you can type in and it will spit it all out here. But it, unless you know the, the syntax and the nomenclature, it's a little more confusing. So the easiest thing to do is go into the data tab and if you've already added the data analysis tool pack through the Excel options, then this little button will show up over here. Um, so if you don't have that on your version of Excel, whoever's watching this, then um, you know do a search for adding data analysis tool pack to Excel. Once you've done that, it'll show up on the data tab over here. So I'm gonna do that and I'm going to, I wish it would default to showing me regression instead of random number generator. But I'll scroll down to doing a regression Okay. The layout of the little windows is similar to the, I mean, as far as, you know, having this little icon here that you can click in and highlight your data, it's similar to this same layout that I had when we were editing our, our graphs back in the other video. So I want to input my Y range, which is only going to be one variable. It's only going to be my dependent variable. So I will, again, you could type it in if you wanted to, like E2 down to E whatever, or I can click on this little, this little square on the side and then I can highlight everything. And I'm gonna highlight the title also. Okay. If you don't wanna scroll all the way down, you can click in the header and then hit Control, Shift, Down, the down arrow, Control, Shift, Down arrow, and it'll highlight everything automatically for you instead of having to start here and like pull it down and watch the screen scroll by. So um, I've got that selected. I will hit the this icon again to bring the window back. So my X range is going to be all of my independent variables, which I said I'm going to use all four of these. So I will hit my little button here again, and I will highlight the headers of all of those. And again, I could either move my mouse down and uh, select them all, or I could hit the control shift down arrow, and it, it will grab all of them. So hit my little button again. So I know that I'm only selecting column E, as my Y variable, my dependent variable, and I'm selecting columns A through D as my independent variables. I highlighted the headers or row one. Those are the titles of my variables or the labels of my variables. And since I did that, I wanna hit the little box here that says labels. Because Excel is going to think anything that you, if you don't have this box checked, Excel is gonna think that everything that's in here is data that it can use to run a regression. Well. Again, row one is not actual data, it's just the names of my, my variables. So I click on the labels button and it knows that the first row is gonna be my, my labels, or the variable names. Um, another thing that we do sometimes is like, oh, I don't remember which chapter it is, when, when we estimate um, variable cost functions, where I know that the data should run right through the intercept, or sorry, the origin, that there should not be an intercept, it should always run straight through the origin. I can force it to set the intercept equal to zero by selecting this box, but I don't have any exception that that should be the case in this situation. So I'll leave that open. I could just hit OK, and it's going to open another sheet where the results are. Um, that's sometimes useful, but sometimes I like to have the results right on the same sheet where my data is so I can see what's going on. So if I say, instead of having my results or my output be an entirely new worksheet, it'll, you know, it'll come down here somewhere and it'll say sheet four, it'll plop it in somewhere. Um, I can say, well, I want, you could even do a new workbook too. Um, but I'm gonna say, I want, I wanna tell you where I want my output to be. So I'm gonna hit this first button and do this little thing again. Hey, Christian. Hey. And I will just put my cursor right here in G14. So it's going to put all of my output in starting in this little G14 column. You'll, you'll see what that does if I hit okay here. 
So right where I had G14 was right here, and it puts all my output kind of in a box where this is at the upper left-hand portion of it. So here's my results. Let me open this up a little bit. And as far as this class goes, I don't really worry about these confidence intervals, so I'll just delete those to make things simple. Um, and we don't really use the ANOVA in this class all that much either. And we don't really use this. And we don't really use that. So what I tend to look at, I mean, those, all those other things are helpful, but as far as what we're going to use in this class, I don't use those too much. So I have my results here. I've got the R squared value, the adjusted R squared, which I think I mentioned before I like to use um, when you have more than one uh, independent variable. If you only have one, you can look at the R squared itself, but the adjusted R squared corrects for having more than one independent variable. Um, and so the output, it gives me the coefficients first in its own column, the standard errors in this column, the T statistics, P values. Um, so there's my results. Again, I get what my intercept is, and then the, the coefficient on gas tax, coefficient on those, average income, coefficient on paved highways, proportion of the population. So if I was going to write this out, I could say, I use the gas consumption, consumption of gas, and the formula for that. I'm just going to round these, but I'll show you what I usually do in a second. Um, so my intercept is that 377. I know it's minus 34.79 times whatever the gas tax is, minus 0 0.067 times the average income minus 0 0.002 of the paved highways plus 1336.45. Um, this was the proportion driver's license. So if I, if I was going to write it out, if someone asked me what is the your estimated equation, I would write it out like this, using all these coefficient values. Um, if I wanted to actually use these coefficients to come up with a, a guess for what I think the consumption might be, then I'd, I'd refer to the cells themselves. Um, so if, let's see, if someone said, how much gas consumption do you expect there to be if the gas tax, let's say, so I'll just do a big if up here. If the gas tax was, oh, they look like they're in a seven, so let me do like six cents. If the gas tax was six, and if average income was uh, 5,000, those look pretty big. If the paved highways was, those look pretty big too, I'll just say 2,000. And if the driver's license was, those look in the 50s, let's say, if I'm wondering if a lot of people start driving. So, because again, sometimes we have questions, and what we did in the previous assignment, or at least in the assessment that we had, because um, we talked about this on Monday, about what the predicted sales of soft drinks were, um, if you had certain, if you knew what the number of businesses were and the, some other variable, I can't remember what. Um, so if all these things were true, then what would the, uh, what is your estimated gas consumption? What is estimated gas consumption? Um, is my screen too small? Can you guys make out the little numbers that are showing up? Okay. So then I could say, let me do it this way, six, 5,000, 2,000, 3.7. So I'll enter these particular values over here just as data by itself. So if I said, what is the estimated gas consumption? Well, it's gonna be equal, so I'm, doing my for I'm gonna do a formula now. So I wanna have my intercept there. And then I'm gonna say, even though I know the gas tax is negative, has a negative coefficient out front, I'm gonna say plus, when I do plus that, it's going to remember that it has a negative value there. So even though I'm doing plus H31, it still is going to, it still is going to end up doing uh, minus 34.79. So 
Um, but let me do that coefficient times that expected gas tax value, which was the six cents here. And then if the average income, I need the average of income coefficient, so I'll refer to that. And if I thought the average income was 5,000, I'll select that one, plus the paved highway coefficient times my guess of what the paved highway value is, plus the proportion population coefficient times the 70% expected driver's license proportion. So I'll leave that little thing lit up for a second if people are watching the video and want to pause it and see where it's coming from. So then if I hit enter, I get this estimate for the amount of gas consumption. So if all of these variables are as they are, and if I'm using my regression results, then gas consumption would be about 766.27. So if all of that's true, I should put it then here. Then gas consumption would be that. So does that make sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. All right. Since you said it makes a lot of sense and no one else says this makes no sense, I'll stop recording now so everyone will watch <laughs> you will feel like this little tutorial was perfectly helpful. <laughs>